In this video, we will examine the encryption scheme known as a Caesar cipher. The Caesar cipher receives its namesake from the Roman Julius Caesar and is one of the earliest known implementations of symmetric key cryptography. The Caesar cipher works by cyclically shifting the alphabet by n letters, where n is a natural number, and is best visualized through the use of a decoder disk. The decoder disk consists of two circular disks which contain all of the elements from the set Blackboard A, which is the character space and the 26 letters of the alphabet. The outer disk is fixed and does not move, while the inner disk can rotate freely to shift the characters by the required number of spaces. We use the outer disk to represent the characters of the plain text message and we use the characters of the inner disk to represent the ciphertext. When encrypting a plain text message, we shift the alphabet backwards by n spaces. To do this, we label the character space with a 0, we label z with a 1, y with a 2, and so on, with a receiving the label 26. We then shift the inner dial clockwise to encrypt the plain text string. For example, if we wanted to use a Caesar cipher with a shift by seven characters, we would start with the disk on the left, and after a shift by seven characters, we would end with the disk on the right. The disk on the left, in which every character is perfectly aligned in both the inner and outer disks, we will refer to as the starting or home position. This process of encryption we can view as a function j which is a function from the set of characters to the set of characters. To illustrate this encryption process, let's do an example. Let's say we wanted to encrypt the plain text message topics in mathematics with a Caesar cipher with a shift by seven characters. Remember that the dash in the topics in mathematics phrase is indicative of a space. To perform the encryption, we first turn the inner dial of our decoder disk seven spaces clockwise. Next, we read from the outer disk in, as the outer disk represents the plain text and the inner disk represents the ciphertext. So, the T in the word topics is now sent to the letter M. The O in topics is sent to the letter H, and so on. We simply find each character in our plain text message on the outer ring and write its corresponding inner ring character as part of the encrypted message. In terms of the encryption function j, we can say that the image of t under j is m, the image of o under j is h, and so on. After encoding every character in our plain text, we have the final encrypted message shown here. Now, let's do a different example, where instead we want to decrypt a given ciphertext. Suppose that we were given the following ciphertext, and told that it was encrypted using a Caesar cipher with a 13-character shift. Starting from the home position, we spin the inner ring of our decoder disk 13 characters clockwise to match the encryption cipher. Now, to decrypt the message and recover the original plain text, we read from the inner disk outward. In terms of a function, reading from the inner ring outward is applying the decryption function J inverse. To decode the ciphertext, we compute the image for each character in the ciphertext under J inverse. The image of G under J inverse is T. The image of V under J inverse is H, and so on. Computing the images for each character in our ciphertext under J inverse, we recover the plain text, the Math Help Center, which is where you should go if you're struggling with these types of problems. Here are some examples for you to try on your own. Using a Caesar cipher with the given number of character shifts, encrypt and decrypt the following messages. If you're having trouble visualizing the encryption or decryption process, try making your own decoder disk.
here are the solutions for these Caesar cipher problems.